Hi, I'm Jennifer from CGJC Tools and today we're going to be making this. In this video, we will discuss the top three technical issues that many beginners face and freak out about. In many cases, people ask on a forum and get one-line answers on how to fix the solution, which is good because it means you can keep working, but the problem with this is that you never really know why it happened in the first place and you might keep making the same mistake. In this video, I will show you the issues, explain to you exactly why it happened, and how, in some cases, you can take advantage of it. Also, stay watching until the end of the video to get a bonus tip that even many experienced users are unaware of that can definitely save you a lot of headaches in the future. Let's dive in with number one. Many users are working in Maya just fine, and then all of a sudden, when they try to select one vertex on their mesh, for some reason, they select the vertex and the entire mesh is yellow. They try to move that vertex, and instead of moving that one point, they move the entire mesh. When you don't know what's happening, it can be very frustrating, but don't panic. You simply just turned on soft selection mode. How did you turn it on? You probably pressed B on your keyboard, which is the shortcut for soft selection mode. If you click on B now, you see that the yellow is now gone, and I can now select that one vertex and move it however I please. It's a pretty simple solution, but let's talk about why that feature exists and how you can use it to your advantage. So if I press B to turn on my soft selection mode again, my entire mesh is yellow. If I hold down the B key and middle mouse drag left and right, I could also left click and drag left and right, you see that there's a circle around my selection. If you move the mouse left, I'm shrinking the circle, and if I move it right, I increase it. This is my soft selection range. That indicates how many components I'm selecting. If you want to further finesse the settings on your soft selection, you can double click on your move tool here and open the soft selection tab. Here, you can enable it and adjust the fall off of the curve. So with soft selection on, if I move one of the points, you see that I'm creating kind of a nice gradual bump on my object. You can use this in modeling to your advantage. Number two, my shader turned green. This happens to everyone at least once. The reason this happens is that somewhere down the line, you disconnected your shader. You either deleted the shader or deleted the connection. There's three ways to problem solve this. First, let's understand what the shader is and how the shader group works. I'll create a new shader in the hypershade. If I come here and click tab, and start typing Lambert. It auto fills, and if I hit enter, I create a Lambert node. As soon as that Lambert is created, you see that the out color of the shader goes into the shader group surface shader attribute. You need this connection in order for your shader to work properly. If you have a green shader, then some component of this connection is missing from your shader. So possible issue number one. If you select your object and go to the attribute editor, you see that there's a node here that has the shader name with SG at the end of the name, and it's associated with your mesh. If you click it and you see that there's a red X on your icon, this means that you either disconnected your shader by removing the node connection, or you deleted the actual shader. Scenario number one, let's say you deleted the actual shader. If you come here to materials, you can go through this list, and let's say you realize that the shader really is in fact gone. This means that you have to create a new one. You can make a new shader and assign it directly to your mesh. This is fine if you have one object, but it can be a real pain if you have many objects in the same shader. In this case, what I would recommend is you create the new shader, delete the new shader group that came with it, go here to shading groups, look for the one that is connected to your mesh, middle mouse click over it and drag it to this window. Then left click here at the out color dot and drag to connect this noodle to the shading group surface attribute. This will automatically connect that shader to every mesh associated with that shading group. Let's go with possible issue number two. You have that red X icon on your shading group and you go to your materials list in the hypershade and you actually find your shader. This just means that your shader and surface group are disconnected. All you have to do is go to your materials list, find your shader, middle mouse drag it here, then go to your shading group, find your shader group, middle mouse drag it in here as well. Now click on the out color circle and drag it to that shader group surface shader to reconnect them. Voila! You have your shader reconnected and appearing on all of your objects. Possible issue number three. If you click on your object and it does not have a shader group associated with it in the attribute editor, this means that you deleted your shader group. You can go to materials to find your shader and pipe it in here to see if that's true, assuming that you still have your shader. 
If you don't, then you probably deleted both your shader group and shader, and you just have to create a new shader and reassign it. But if you do have your shader and no shader group, that's great because you can keep your shader and all we have to do is create a new shader group. We can't create a shader group node by itself. So we have to create a new shader with the same type of shader. So if I type Lambert, I can delete the Lambert shader, but keep the new shader group. Now all I have to do is go to the out color of my old shader and connect it to the new surface shader. You will then have to select your geometry, right click on the shader and click assign material to the viewport selection to assign it back to all of those geometries. So those are all the ways you can fix the green shader. Now let's go to issue number three. I lost all the icons on my shelf. Again, don't panic. Many people don't know this, but these window icon shelves have the ability to scroll in order to allow you to keep adding more and more icons to the shelf. Simply hover over it and scroll up or down until you find your icons again. Pretty easy solution for that one. Now for the bonus tech issue tip. There's an issue that's mostly faced when dealing with character rigs and sometimes very high complex scenes. So when you have a character rig, and you just want to animate an arm in IK bending, for example. You set your first keyframe, and then you set your second keyframe with the arm bent, and everything looks fine. Yet, when you press play and your arm deforms odd, somewhat like this, it looks like some type of calculation was missed. So you think to yourself, this looked fine when I moved the control, so what happened when I press play? So you decide to scrub through your timeline, and it looks fine once again. So what's happening during playback? The reason this could be happening is because you probably have your Maya set to parallel evaluation mode. Parallel mode is a bit complicated and advanced to fully understand for a beginner. I'll still put some documentation in the description about parallel mode. But basically, Maya has different ways of evaluating your scene. The most common is DG and parallel. The default method used to be DG, but with new advancements in technology, the new default is parallel mode as it can generally improve the speed of your scene. However, not all scenes work in parallel mode. It really depends on the type of computer you have and the type of rigs you are dealing with. If you're running into this issue, try coming here to your preference settings and clicking on animation. Here at the top, you will see evaluation mode set to parallel. Click this and change it to DG. Now if you hit play, your animation should play back the way that you would have expected it to. Now you know three major beginner pitfalls and one great bonus tip that every user should be aware of. And that concludes our video. A virtual high five and a round of applause for learning something new. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also check out our links below for some cool CG stuff, our social media pages, and our Patreon page. I'll see you in the next video.